the previous videos, we talk about the outcome-based education. There are various types of the outcomes. Now, formal evaluations shall focus on the course outcome, program outcome, and program objectives. For each type of outcome, there will be one complete CQI cycle. And they are looping at different paces, as indicated by the frequency here. Now, let us discuss in detail regarding the CQI for the program objective, program outcome, and the cost outcome. First, we talk about the CO, cost outcome. It should be aligned with the cost content. The assessments are normally done by the cost lecturer, same schools to the analysis, as well as the CQI actions. The cost lecturer is fully responsible for that particular cost. Now regarding the frequency of the assessment, normally for the CO levels, we do the assessment at the end of the semesters. We compile all the assessment results from the students, analyze it, and determine the attainment status of that particular COs. Some universities have a monitoring process during the half of the semester. This is optional. Not many universities is doing that. There are pros and cons. When it comes to the formal monitoring of the attainments of the CO, the cost itself will be more sensitive to the response of the students. Since we are monitoring it halfway, we have early indications about the student's performance based on what we have conducted through the teaching and learning activities. Now, if there are any weakness or problem, ratifications can be carried out immediately. These are the advantage. Now, the disadvantage here when you have formal monitoring of the cost outcome, this will add up to the workload of the lecturers and probably the CQI coordinators. CQI coordinators is the person within the program that facilitates the entire CQI process within that particular program. In most universities, they don't have formal monitoring here. Personally, I feel this may not be necessary as well. Nevertheless, we can still do some informal monitoring on the voluntary basis of that particular course lecturer. The course lecturer needs to be vigilant, sensitive to the response of the students, and once in a while conduct some quick assessment in order to gauge the status of the students, whether they can cope with the content of the course. You can still get early indications in terms of the attainment status of the CO, which likely to be the result at the end of the semester. I feel this is more flexible. Anyway, there are still university doing this making the course to be more dynamic and responsive to the student's performance. This is up to the strategy of that particular program manager. Next, it will be the PO levels. The PO should be aligned with the 11 IEA graduate attributes or the EAC program outcomes. In fact, the EAC program outcome is worked on the basis of the graduate attribute as identified by the IEA. So, there are no contradictions between the EAC PO and IEA GA. We will have to make sure our program also will align with those graduate attributes. In terms of the analysis and the actions, 
The PO levels are normally the responsibility of the head of the program or the CQI coordinator. Normally, the final assessments for the PO level, it will be at the end of the academic cycles. Let's say now this engineering program is 4 years. So at the end of the academic cycle, that means after 4 years, we will be able to confirm the attainment status of the PO. Now this 4 years is rather long. The corrective actions and the response to the performance of the program can be quite slow. Therefore, it is often to have a monitoring process in terms of the attainment status of the program and which is normally conducted every year. I guess all the universities are doing this. Now when you do this monitoring, you are doing on the basis of different cohorts. Let's say now a full running program has four years of academics. One cohort is received per year. Collectively, you combine the data from that all four cohorts here. You can imagine the performance of that particular program as a whole, although the data comes from different cohorts. This shall give us quite a good indication whether your program is actually meeting the performance. Having these indications, it is possible for you to identify the strengths and weaknesses of your program and propose improvements. You know that the final actual data should come from one specific cohort. Therefore, when it comes to the end of the academic cycle, Doing the confirmations, all data should come from the same cohort. This is where you can confirm whether your program is actually meeting its performance. Next, it will be the program objectives. These are normally aligned with the institutional visions, missions and goals. Now, the responsible parties now it will be higher up. Very often, it will involve the deans of that particular school. There should be collective actions between the head of the program, CQI coordinators, and also deans. Now, for a complete cycle of program objective, it will be the three to five years after graduate. That means one complete cycle. It will be the academic cycle, about four years plus 3 to 5 years. This can easily reach to 9 years in total. Again, now this response it will be quite slow and normally there will be a process of the monitoring. Of course, some universities are not doing this. This can be optional. But I feel it is good to have it that you closely check with the latest development from the industry compare against the competency of your graduates. At the same time, you keep your program to be up to date, having the awareness of the contemporary issues, latest technology, newest regulations, as well as the development of the countries. It is good to have that. You may also have this to have continuous input from the industry and the stakeholders to keep your programs always up to date. For the full confirmations here, it will be quite slow. You can monitor it annually, by annually, or by academic cycles, depending on your preferences and the needs. Based on my personal opinion, engineering industry is actually evolving very fast. You might not be able to have the monitoring by every academic cycles. You might need to increase the frequency, probably every two years once, or maybe every year, to closely monitor the development of the industries. This is especially when you have the graduates every year. If you do it annually, 
you may monitor your graduates from different cohorts accordingly. This shall allow you to stay close with the industry. And then when it comes to the major CQI, probably you don't have to go for every year. A major review can be done every academic cycles to show that you are also doing CQI at the PEO levels.